cream on your cookies. On your cookies. <laughs> I did everything, like up to my crack, everything. <laughs> Italian people dip their gorgonzola cheese pizza in honey. That's oh the way God, to eat it. Oh my God, you want to get canceled? That's the way to eat it. So hi guys, my name is Anna and today I am joined with Kelsey the Korean We just filmed a video on her channel so go check that out afterwards So I've now been back in Korea for like over a year now And I have written down a list of things that's kind of changed for me How I live my life since I've been back because obviously there are differences That's what I'm gonna talk about and she's just gonna comment along and see if, if it's right So one thing I've definitely noticed since I've been back is that Nobody holds doors for me. Yes. <laughs> Apparently. Yeah. So I was I grew up in basically boarding school in the UK, and I was taught by my teachers like mm. you have to hold open the doors before mm. for someone who's walking behind mm. you, even if they were like like quite a far yeah, away away. Like, if you see them and they see you, then it's like it's so incredibly rude for you to just ignore that and just like walk mm. in yourself. But in Korea, literally yesterday, like I was literally like right behind the guy. Right behind the guy. He just like slams the door. I'm just yeah. like it's just basic human courtesy. Like yeah. it doesn't take that much effort to just like hold the door. Yeah. Korean people do care about manners, but that rule is just not in our brains. No one yeah. teaches us that. But like that's something I really had to get used to again. And I feel like Seoul people, especially they're so city people, they're just like on their phones while they're mm. working and they're just walking and they're just like, I'm out. Apparently Americans say that about New York people. Like, oh, New Yorkers <laughs> are so like snobby and like... But I mean, yeah, in Korea you will definitely notice. If, especially if you come from living abroad, you will definitely notice yeah. nobody holds yeah. doors for you yeah. and you don't have to hold it for other people. Yeah. Nobody that's anything. good. <laughs> <laughs> When I was in London, I usually drank like flat whites, lattes, but obviously when I'm in Korea, what do, what do we drink? Americano. Iced Americano. <laughs> I don't know why that's the thing. Like in Europe, everyone drinks like espressos. Yes, yes. If you show an Italian person iced, iced Americano, Americano. I'll be like, this is not coffee. Like what the fuck is this? This is like watered down shit. Yeah. And it, I kind of understand, but it's just something I think so it's refreshing. it's American influence. Yeah, they drink a lot of iced coffees. Yeah, so that's why, because we suck America's. <laughs> like historically and until now. Everyone drinks it in the winter time too. Yeah. In the freezing cold winter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People. people holding iced Americanos. Yeah. Drink it. It's just a thing, but just try it when you come to Korea. It's a very Korean thing. So in the UK we had free healthcare, but because it's free and because it's the services is so overstretched. For me, if I wanted to go to the doctor, you always had to book an appointment by mm -hmm. calling. Mm -hmm. And then they'd be like, okay, the next available appointment is like two, two weeks, weeks from now. I was like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, like I, I'm gonna be a better by that point yeah, already, yeah, or like yeah. I have died or something. <laughs> I don't know. Or you, there is an option where you just walk into the emergency services at the hospital. It's but expensive. then you, no, no, but that's free. But you literally walk in and you could wait up to like five hours okay, to get seen. Okay. So you literally have to like waste the whole day. Mm. You're in a room full of people who are like missing one leg or like because it's like A and E, yeah, it's like yeah, emergency, yeah. and everyone's like fucking sick and like waiting to get seen. So it's just like not a nice experience. Whereas in Korea, I don't need to book an appointment. There are so many clinics. Yes, well. there's literally like one hospital every block every block and i can just yep. walk into any single one and get seen within five minutes yep. also dermatologists yes in korea is yes. a super common thing everyone goes to get like skin laser treatments yeah. or like if you acne. have acne you can just go to the dermatologist and they like squeeze it out for you yeah. in like a super hygienic way whereas if i say to people in my friends in london like i'm going to go see a dermatologist that's seen as like a super luxury thing really because first of all it is fucking expensive okay. and it's like only for like seriously rich people do they go to dermatologists okay. for example like one of the things, if you guys ever come to Korea, one thing that's really worth doing if you have the time is like laser hair removal. Oh, maybe. To get underarm hair removal in mm. Korea for one session is like manon, which is like $10. $10. Do you know how much it is in the UK? $20? <laughs> I wrote this down. It was fucking ridiculous. So in Korea, yeah, for one session is like $10 or for five sessions, usually it's like you have to do five, five yeah, to, to get, get it removed. Yeah. And that's like 50 in London, one session is Kumanse Chonon, which is like $82, one session. And then five sessions is obviously five times that. And so I could never imagine getting like yeah. anything done in London. Because it's just expensive. like, it's fucking expensive. Damn. Yeah. We have good healthcare. We do. I would say. It's pretty common, like if you're tired, a lot of workers do this. Yes. They just at lunchtime they can yes. go to hospital and just get an IV drip IV drip and it like, <laughs> like livens you exactly. up exactly like a vitamin drip or yeah, whatever yeah it's like so cheap it's like $10 and it's like not a big deal like everyone's just like oh yeah I'm just going like, yeah. <laughs> to like laser hair removal I got everything done as soon as I came back to Korea but Even obviously your cookie of course my cookie <laughs> 
Do you not? I've been shaving everything since I was like. Yeah, I still shave, but you just got it lasered. Lasered, and it, oh my god, it's, it's life changing. Life changing. Life changing. So no hair at all is growing. Like, I already went for five sessions. Okay. Well, some parts come back, but the hair is so much lighter okay. and thinner. Does it hurt the laser? No. You put okay. cream on yourself before they do it. Cream on your cookies. On your cookies. <laughs> I have it everything, like up to my crack, everything. <laughs> No, seriously, I don't want any hair down there. Seriously, I just that's how I like it. I've never gone to a waxing salon, and that just uh, seems horrific to me. Yeah, laser is so much better. You should get it done. Okay. It's not expensive. Okay. I think it's something seriously worth it. Yeah, but it? then they're seeing my cookie. Oh, I, come I, on, it's like it's a woman, and like they will, they have seen so many every day. It's like their job. <laughs> yeah, go, being able to go to hospitals is such a blessing. Like whenever I want, that is such a blessing. One thing I miss about being in the UK is there's not much green space in Seoul. Yeah. Not many parks at all. In London, there were so many. I was really blessed. I live right next to like Primrose Hill, so I could always go out for a run, walk, whatever. Nature is like such a luxury. It's a luxury. In Seoul. There are trees on the streets, but like there are not enough parks and we want more, more nature, more yeah. green space. I feel sorry for the dogs in my area because they just walk next to cars. Yeah. Like on the crosswalk yeah. walk because there's no parks. Oh yeah, and air quality in Korea is yeah. not good either. We have something called yellow dust. Yep. And it can fine dust. Fine dust. That's why we wear masks all the time anyway, regardless yeah. of COVID. And so, I mean, f even for the kids, I feel bad. Yeah, I feel bad for fucking kids and the dogs. Kids and the dogs. And dog. fucking me. <laughs> Basically everyone. <laughs> A lot of times you wake up here and you see smog. Like thick, yes. smoky. Yes. But to be fair, Europe in general is really like grey and rainy yeah, most true. of the time. Whereas in Seoul, even in the winter, at least there's still Sun. sunlight. It's like freezing cold. <laughs> like that kind of freezing cold where it like chills your bones and you feel like your head is going to explode. Yeah, I felt like my ears were going to cut off. At one point, it's like legit, so cool. legit. But at least there's some sunlight. Whereas in London, it was depressing in the winter. It was just grey for months. And that's why people get depressed. Seasonal depression. Seasonal depression is a real, real thing. Yeah. It's like 100% a real thing. That's why I want to go live in California, where it's like heaven all the time. Oh, and this. You guys know I'm a BTS fan. And like Weavers, which is their platform for all the merchandise they sell. Obviously, I when I live in Korea, I pay no shipping, but mm. they pay international fares. It's horrendous shipping fees. Really? It's, yeah, it's much? like literally, sometimes it's more than the item. Okay. Like $50 so for shipping? Yeah, legit. So it's like, I'm so sorry like to all of you, and I'm so glad I don't live in the That's UK. That's so worth it. Anymore. <laughs> now I'm in, in Korea, if they have any events, pop-up yeah, events. Yeah, fucking you have access to everything. I have more access to that stuff, so that's, that's a that's blessing. Nice. Yeah. That's nice. Is um, it worth it over the shitty air you have to deal with? <laughs> Are you a true army fan? Is it worth it? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get me cancelled. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Next point is everyone in Korea looks amazing uh, when they're out and about. Yeah. On the whole, because they care more. In general. Yeah, definitely. People dress better. Dress better and like effort into hair, makeup, yeah. everything is just way higher standard here than yeah. London. Yeah. And in the UK there were a huge more range of styles. Yeah. Yes. Everyone looks the same. same. Everyone looks like, super stylish, but yeah, the but same. same style. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's too much to be just called a trend because it's just too like, conformist. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes, and so I find myself obviously when I buy clothes, I buy like some of it in Korean online stores, but then I can literally imagine like fifty other girls. Yeah, but on the thing is, you don't even have options thing. on the shopping mall. They just all same just sell the same basic. Clothing. They sell the same style, same clothing. So I find myself now options. that I'm back in Korea to want to buy um, like from abroad mm. online shopping mm. stores but obviously when I was in the UK I wanted to buy Korean clothes because it's just always like green, grass is green yeah, on the yeah. other side that's, that's the thing whereas in London there were people like you know really hippie or like emo, yeah. Yeah. rock, grunge and obviously like people don't really care what you wear yeah. they like just wear what you want but yeah, if, I, but if the, I dress like that in Korea yeah people literally come up to you and ask like why are you dressed like that? Well, what is this? they literally ask if you like look slightly out of the norm, yeah. they'll be like, that girl is super weird. Like, yeah. why is she, why is she Kwan Jong? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. attention seeker, this kind of thing. So in Korea, you kind of have to blend in, really blend in. I feel like. You don't have to. I don't like it. <laughs> Groceries in general are so expensive. expensive. Fruit is so expensive. Yeah. Meat is expensive. Yeah. yeah. Eating out in Korea is actually not that expensive. Sometimes, if you, especially if you live alone, it's actually cheaper, cheaper. sometimes to eat out than just like buy Get, groceries yeah. and like cook food. Yeah, so. cook food. Oh my god, I have these premium strawberries. I want to show you. Yes. Like, it's so expensive to the point where we give fruit as presents. Yeah. 
we get fruit, like premium fruit, like shine musket. Yeah, exactly. Mokromo. So my dad got like these strawberries as a gift. Yeah. And they come like individually dented like packaging. And yes. this box of 20 something strawberries is like $20. Yeah. Can you, can you imagine? <laughs> But they're big and juicy. Yes, they smell really good. <laughs> but it's like too fucking expensive. Yeah, twenty dollars. Yeah, to buy regularly. Stuff. Whereas yeah, in London, that was not the case. I could eat all the fruit I wanted. Okay, and the other thing, I still don't like Korean pizza. If you've been abroad and then you come to Korea, you will know exactly what I mean. But it's like there are so many weird fucking toppings on yeah. it. Like they put like sweet potato mousse, sweet potato mousse, shrimp, and sometimes like stuff like cereal. Yeah, and, like, and they put like powdered sugar on the pizza. powdered sugar, <laughs> and they just way way too experimental with the pizza. And like, I just prefer like just basic pepperoni, like cheese, salty, like, not sweet. Yeah, savory. Mm. That's what I want. And um. Sometimes you can um, find in restaurants like gorgonzola pizza, which is like cheese pizza, and then you dip it, it in, in honey. honey. That's nice. That will horrify an but Italian. Isn't... That will horrify I thought that's you. what they do in Italy. No, that's not a thing! <laughs> they just have cheese, tomato sauce, and like no, basil. No, gorgonzola cheese pizza, you dip it in honey. That's what. That's, that's, the, the completely, that's the authentic way to eat it. That's a completely Korean-made thing. But they have dessert pizza in Italy and stuff. It's like sweet pizza, no? That's not like Nutella pizza. Yeah. But it's not like savory cheese and then you dip it in honey. That's I Why? Never heard of that. I love it. Okay, no, no, no. That's not. This is a completely Korean thing, guys. Please write in the comments down it's below. It's not. I swear it's authentic. Italian people <laughs> dip their gorgonzola cheese pizza in honey. That's oh the my way God, to you eat. You want to get canceled? That's the way to eat. It. I swear. You know, like the sandwiches in Korean convenience stores. You have stuff like ham, cheese, and then jam. That's not a thing in any other country. Yeah, I know that's not a thing. I have a guilty pleasure with Korean pizza. What? There's this pizza that I like. It's like just basic cheese pizza. And then it has a bunch of like actual potato fries on top. Potato fries. And then it's drizzled with honey on top. And then it powdered sugar. And it's fucking good. That's a thing? It's like salty and sweet. Yeah. I can show you the picture. Where's my fucking... That's my vibrator. <laughs> Do you like pineapple on pizza? No. Yeah, I don't think no. any sweet thing should be on pizza. That's my belief. Even when you go to bakeries, like the garlic bread has sugar. It's sugared garlic bread. Oh, look at this honey potato pizza. <laughs> that looks horrific. It's Can you see? Yeah. What the f is it's that? It's amazing. It's, it's, that is not it's pizza. potato chips on top of pizza, and then it's drizzled with honey, and then powdered sugar. It's that amazing. is an abomination. Oh my god. I like it. <laughs> Okay, and this is another thing. I was used to hugging people when I meet them for the mm. first time in the UK. Mm. Maybe not in a professional setting, but if I think anyone in a casual setting. Hi! Hi, how are you? Like, nice to meet you. My mm. name is Anna. Mm. That's how you greet people, but mm. in Korea, that is not a thing. Ever, ever. And if you try to hug them, they will just freak out. They were like, ah, I'm okay. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like even my Korean like girlfriends, like, I don't really hug them mm. either because mm. they're just, oh, Anya, we do this, but we, I don't really hug them because I feel like they're, like, uncomfortable. Yo. So I miss doing that when I was Because yeah, when I was depressed, because I broke up with my boyfriend, mm. and then I wanted to cuddle someone to mm. feel that comfort, and I'm not going to find some dude to cuddle because they're going to want more than a cuddle. Because mm. so I was asking my girl, Korean girlfriends, like, oh, can you cuddle me? And they're like, no, that's weird. Really? Yeah, they don't want to cuddle! Aww. Like, <laughs> I honestly miss doing that and like that was something I had to like physically stop myself from doing when I came back to Korea. Mm. I was like, okay, you can't act like this mm. here. So, but in France, you know that the, the, the la bise, which is like the air kiss mm. they do? It's like you touch cheeks, you kiss the air, so you go mwah, mwah on mm. each side. That freaked me out when I first like came back. Why? It's so cute. But like you're not used to it, so it's like they just like lean in mwah. and do this. I was like, whoa! <laughs> But yeah, none of that is acceptable in Korea. I no longer, though, worry about theft or getting my no. shit stolen. No. Because I had my phone stolen three times in London. Anytime I saw a guy riding a bike and he, like, went past me, I literally have PTSD. Like, even still sometimes. I, like, flinch because I think they literally they're gonna, like, grab something out of my hand. But in Korea, legit, like, I feel no, I so don't. safe. Yeah. I can leave my shit anywhere and it's just not going to get touched. I can go back home in the middle of the night, like whatever time. And I just feel so safe. I don't feel in Once danger. Once I left a very expensive laptop on a very busy bus station for two hours, I came back, it was still there. Nobody takes it. No. And I was talking with my Swedish friends and they're like, why wouldn't people take it if it's just in the street? Yeah. And Korean people are like, why would you take it? Yeah, it's just a complete different mentality. So 
it's very good. unique here. Yeah. Obviously, the other massive thing that's changed is I don't pay rent, horrendous rent anymore. I was living by myself, my family were in Korea, so I had to pay monthly £850, which is $1,154 or pick monthly. How do you pay that when you're a student? It, so, I mean, I was like working. working, hustling. I mean, obviously, the pay they pay more than they would do here but it is a lot of money to pay each month plus you have to pay things like council tax internet bill phone bill like all these things by myself so that's what i was doing when i'm in korea i'm living at home even not having to pay that already saves me yeah. so much compared to before um, that's why you're traveling and shit but that's why i'm able to travel and stuff mm -hmm. and also my house was like a very old victorian house and the landlady had converted like each of the rooms into a studio mm -hmm. so basically kit each tiny room with like a tiny little stovetop mm -hmm. oven and like microwave and call it a studio mm -hmm. but i had to share my bathroom shower with like my next door neighbor and, and it was still 800 pounds yes Okay. That's how crazy London is. And my next door neighbor, bless him, he was a really nice guy. He like worked in theater and he said so that means he was really good at projecting his voice and like, <laughs> ah, la. and he was gay, which I have absolutely no problem with gay people. But he was like flamboyant? So every time he brought back one of his boyfriends mm. at night and my walls were so thin, we mm. shared a wall. If you have heard a gay, he was a big guy too. Guy like moaning at the time. <laughs> Going, oh. Oh. <laughs> the first time I experienced it, I was like, I have to get out of here. <laughs> so oh, God. that's how much I had to pay to live like that. So oh, and one in four flat shares in London have mice, mice problems. But well, we have no, like one in Korea. Oh, uh, but mice is how much worse? Come on. No, Sasha eats mice. Mice is cute. I defrost mice for my pet snake. I like mice. They're, they're cute. They're just like hamsters. They're not yeah, that but disgusting. they're dead and frozen in your fridge. And when you're sleeping, and then you hear like. I try to get underneath your door. Uh, I, I, I prefer I prefer it to be a mice than a cockroach. Do you prefer it to be a cockroach? Yes. What? Ah! You have not lived with the. I have so oh! much PTSD from like my mice experiences. But, but cockroaches are fucking. They look fucking. But at disgusting. least you can kill them. If you throw a book or something heavier, you can kill them. How do you? How are you gonna kill a fucking mouse? Just live with it. It's cute. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm just so traumatized. Like mice are the, now the thing that I fear the most in the world. There's nothing I hate how more big than mice. Is it? Like literally huge. And sometimes I would walk into the kitchen and I could see one like darting behind the microwave and I would just be like, I can't live in this fucking house. The nighttime is like when they are like most active. So I would be like trying to go to sleep and I could hear like. But they don't attack you and they don't look disgusting. So they what's they the sometimes come into the room to see if, if you have food. So every night I would have to like stuff like a towel, thick towel underneath the gap between my door and the floor to make sure they couldn't come in. I really feel like I was a prisoner in my own house. I couldn't sleep properly. When you have one, you have a whole family. <laughs> It's like ratatouille. <laughs> <laughs> like if you want to try and kill it, right? Yeah. You have to either call pest control. Mouse trap. You can okay. either get sticky tape okay. or you get like the yeah, yeah. this kind of. Well, you have to and get you rid see of the that. guts. Like, like you have up. to get you have to like get a plastic bag and get rid of that. Oh! Oh, yeah. You think you can do that? <laughs> or if they get stuck on sticky tape, you have to like try to knock it out and then try to like throw it somewhere away because if they just get stuck, they just start squealing at the top of their lungs. Are you gonna let it just dehydrate or starve to death? But that's really inhumane. Have it as a pet. On sticky tape. <laughs> If you, try to, if you try to take it off the ski tape, that will like completely rip apart their skin. This is, this is not a nice, nice subject to talk about, so moving on, but it was horrendous. I'm traumatized. I don't you want to live in London anymore. I know, don't live there. Basically, what I'm trying to say is, the grass is always greener on the other side. When I was in the UK, I always missed Korea and I always wanted to come back. And, I was like, and when you're in Korea, you want to fucking leave. Yeah, <laughs> that's how I feel. Anyway, go check out Kelsey's channel. I will we, link her video in the description. Yeah, we made a video talking about what it's like to have mental illness, depression in Korea and how it's perceived. So if you're curious about that, come check my video out. Yep. So thank you for watching. Like and subscribe and see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.